What's going on, Geminites? It's your boy, Gem Mint, here with the recent reads on the Matt Fraction Hawkeye Omnibus. Stay tuned. Alright guys, just kind of ran through this omnibus in a couple of days. I don't really know what to say about this book, man. It's definitely abstract, both in the writing and in the artwork. The artwork reminds me of um, Ed Brubaker's Criminal. It's kind of, like I said, abstract, think deadly class, um, pages all with the same kind of hue, uh, and a lot of interesting storytelling methods with the with the artwork. They got a, an issue that's just like a dog roaming around. They have a lot of like subtle panels. We'll look through the artwork for, for the sky view. A lot of people uh, have a lot of praise for this book, and I think it was definitely an interesting read. Uh, they had a lot of humor. They had a, a lot of character development. I mean, Hawkeye. I mean, I've never read uh, West Coast Avengers, but you know, and I don't know how much they developed him in those books. But you never see Hawkeye like this, like in the movies or whatever. In the in the team books, they get to like the core of Hawkeye. Although it's a Clint Barton that I'm not really familiar with. He kind of comes off as. Uh, I don't know how I'd, I would describe him. Kind of like a broken, beat down Matt Murdock at times. This collects issues 1 through 22 and Annual 1, plus Young Avengers presents number 6. So the number 6 of issues of Young Avengers kind of sets you up where we're at in, in, in continuity. It lets you know this takes place after Civil War. Hawkeye was supposedly dead. Young Avengers hit the streets. Kate Bishop takes up the mantle as Hawkeye. She gets the blessing from Captain America. And then we find out that Clinton Barton uh, is actually alive. So that kind of sets us up for this run. And Kate Bishop and Clinton Barton have a pretty good relationship. Uh, I really like Kate Bishop. I thought that she was written really well, very likable. Um, except for the whole, her father's super rich and she's like some spoiled rich girl. But uh, she's dope, man. She's got that eye just like Hawkeye. She can do all the arrow tricks and, you know, she wants to be a hero. She tries to get her Jessica Jones on as a private detective, which <laughs> I didn't really like those parts either. She's always like, yeah, I'll help you. I'm on the case. Can you pay me? It's like, come on, man. She's so desperate. But um, I think it's important to say that they kind of mess up the... Uh, the the reading order of these books from what i pieced together from people in the in the facebook group the gemini's group um the publishing was a little out of whack on this book and like issue 17 came, or 16 came before 15 and uh this book kind of goes issues one through five then 17 then seven then uh 8, 9, 10, 11, and then 6 later on. Like, it's really messed up. And and I think they published this in order of publication, but a lot of people recommended that you should read it 1 through 22. You shouldn't read it the way that the omnibus prints it. I didn't really feel lost. I, you know, to me, if, um, if I'm reading something in this issue, but I'm supposed to read this issue first, if I read it in any order, I'm going to figure it out at the end of the day. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, okay, that's what that meant. So that didn't really bother me much. So you kind of have some villains in this book. Not really. I mean, he's going against these, like, stereotypical Russian mobsters wearing track suits. And everyone's going to want me to say it. The whole bro, 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 this is no good. <laughs> like, every other word they say is bro. And it probably is kind of like how people feel like how I talk in the... San Diego Comic Con video saying dope yo dope these guys are saying bro every two seconds bros and that gets kind of annoying he kind of uh takes up the mantle of the super you ever see Joe Pesci the super that's kind of what he reminds you of he's living in this building he's cool with all the neighbors kind of like uh average Joe in dodgeball he's cool with all like the ragtag group of neighbors they go up on the rooftop and kind of have these these potlucks up there and um these Russian mobsters, uh, the head mobster guy owns the building and he wants to triple everybody's rent and uh, Hawkeye's like, this isn't right, even though he's like legally allowed to do that. And Hawkeye basically um, steals money from bad guys and buys out the building. 
The only problem is the Russians were trying to uh, get everybody out because they owned all the buildings around them and they were trying to do some kind of thing with that. You know, they, they really just wanted everybody out so they could do what they got to do. Uh, you have Madame Mystique, who's a, who plays a villain in this. No, Madame Mask, my bad. And then you have this killer clown assassin guy that works with the Russians and uh, he's pretty badass, pretty creepy looking. So... What really happens in this run? I mean, nothing really happens. That's kind of my only little thing about it. It's like a fun read, but, you know, I do like uh, stories that have a larger scope and a lasting impact on the universe. And this is just kind of like what Hawkeye's doing when he ain't with the Avengers. You know what I mean? And I think they even kind of reference that in there a little bit. So, um, it's not a book that I would say, like, recommend it to, like, new readers. Hey, you got to read Hawkeye by Fraction. I mean, it was a cool, quick read. I enjoyed it. I probably wouldn't reread it again, but it was all right. You know, um, I guess at the time it was a New York bestseller, Marvel's best comic. You get to meet uh, Hawkeye's brother and they have a pretty interesting dynamic. It even goes into their childhood that the father was abusive, would beat the mother and Clint would always try to fight his father and he would get his ass kicked and his older brother, uh, Barton, what was it? Well, they're both Bartons, but Barney, Barton, I guess. Yeah, his deadbeat brother, Barney. Older brother taught him how to fight, taught him everything he knows, and uh, they have a like a kind of dysfunctional relationship, too. Anyway, let's take a look at some of the artwork, and I'll give you guys a better idea of uh, Hawkeye by Matt Fraction. All right, so the front of the dust jacket is kind of similar to how the whole tone of the interiors are. Uh, Matt Fraction, and I don't know the artist, uh, Aja, Aya, I'm not really familiar with that person, sorry. Here we go, we got the white spine. Here's the back. This had a $100 cover price. The book has the same um, pattern on the front and the back of the hardcover. Very kind of retro looking targets. He is an archer. So I feel like the book didn't really have much. It gives you like a little um, table of contents and then it just takes off. But here you can see the numbering, right? Um, oh, I guess not. But 1 through 22, but here's 4 and 5, here's 7. Those are just the different artists, but they, uh, they do have a continuity issue here. So here's the Young Avengers thing. It jumps in and gives us an idea of who Kate Bishop is, different kind of art style. That's actually Hawkeye as Ronan. Uh, I guess during the events of Civil War, Civil War. Then we get into issue one, and you can kind of already see the art direction change to very flat. Like this is like very modern, but the artwork throughout this book is like I almost want to call it four color art. And this reminds me just out of like the the first Avengers movie. <clears throat> Here you go, bro. See these guys with the track suits, the Russian gangsters. They say bro after like every word. They got some dog stuff in here, and they really, uh, they really tug at your your feels there, tug at you in the feels with the hurting the dog stuff. I'm not a fan of that. Kate Bishop is dope in this book. Uh, I loved her a lot at first, but I kind of started to not like her character as much toward the end of the arc. I don't know, just something about it rubbed me the wrong way. I don't know if it was like. They really played like the naive teenage girl kind of thing and how she just makes friends with random strangers. See, look, issue seven, and then it goes to issue six. What? There was a terrible issue in here where Clint is like babysitting these kids and then like their cartoon Winter Friends comes on and the whole comic is like this show about these cartoon characters that I don't give a shit about these characters, man. It has nothing to do with the story. Here it is right here. So you kind of are forced to read this crap with these cartoon animals. It's like, who cares, man? It's probably supposed to be a metaphor for something, but I just was like, that was annoying. Very Art Deco kind of vibe throughout the whole book. This, this issue was weird. Like every other page had like a different like cover for it. This is like the OG of the Russian game. 
gang. Oh, yeah, bro. He even talks like that, too. Got some Natasha, some Jessica Drew. That's uh, Barton's ex. See, he's wearing the shirt from the uh, hardcover design. He gets his ass kicked a lot in this book, man. So does Kate. Here goes our clown uh, assassin guy. This was a cool Robin Hood scene. Splitting the arrow. Here's the dog issue, right? So this is what I mean about like interesting storytelling. Like You're supposed to read all these little panels on this adventure that this dog is going through. It's actually you're seeing the world through the eyes of a dog. Which was pretty clever, man. Fraction is a... He, he's a good writer, man. Like, see, just the paneling and, like, the storytelling was, was pretty unique through these panels. You see more of that throughout the book. But you see how, like, everything is, like, similar colors. This is just purple and yellow. This is all purple. This is all, like, teal, turquoise. So he gets uh, like an arrow through the ears and he goes deaf. So then like there's a lot of sign language stuff going on in this issue. Definitely doesn't feel like a superhero book. It feels like a crime drama kind of Baker type of book. The only superhero stuff is Hawkeye stuff and they're just regular people who just can shoot arrows real good, you know. All right, guys, there you have it. Nothing really spoiler, uh, spoilery in this book, so we don't have to have a little after credit scene or anything, but that was the Hawkeye review. I wanted something really quick because um, I want to read this He-Man Masters of the Universe omnibus that actually just came in today, so I wanted to hurry up and knock something out in between. Um, I'm happy I read it. Another notch under the belt. And, um, yeah, man, let me know what you thought about it in the comments below. Make sure to hit that like on the way out. And make sure to subscribe to the channel for more recent reads and other daily content. Stay minty. Peace.